Hello. Hello, Dr. Ngengasan. We hear you very well. You're okay. welcome. Yes, okay. we will start in two minutes. Thank you very much. Cindy, you can start when you're ready. Sure, thank you. All right, are we all ready to go? Okay then, so I think I am ready on my end and um, I think we should be good to go production team. All right then, I think so. All right, good afternoon and good, good morning, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you distinguished guests. I, um, I am very happy to welcome you this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are joining us from. I hope um, for all the panelists, all your mics are muted and all your videos are on. And I'd like to observe all the protocols at this time. Uh, welcome to another virtual event hosted by the Office of the African Youth Envoy in collaboration with the AU Women, Gender and Develop uh, Development Directorate. It is my pleasure as always and honor to welcome you to this very exciting launch of the Saudi Block, which is the first ever Africa Young Feminist Block by the African Union. The Saudi Block features a collection of 25 contributions by young women from across Africa and the diaspora, sharing their stories of triumph and how they are um, and have been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic within their respective countries of re residence. I mean, these are many more, uh, there are many more stories of triumphs like, like the ones we are going to um, hear today and that we're here to celebrate. So please, if you're watching, do share with us um, on the chat box. Um, there is a chat box available for all the participants, whether you're on Facebook or you're joining us on Zoom. And let us know where you're joining us from the beautiful continent of Africa, or if you're joining us from the diaspora like myself today. And we do hope that all the regions are represented. And um, for those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Cindy Zamra Bernard. I am the team lead and the coordinator for the Intergenerational Dialogues Portfolio at the AU Office of the Youth Envoy. And I'll be very honored to be your event um, master of ceremony today. But before we get going, I would like to honor, recognize, and give a special thanks to all the elders and the high level speakers from within the African Union, um, Far Away Africa CDC, and to Her Excellency Mrs. Neo Masisi, the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana, who's graciously joining us today. And um, in, uh, in her absence, the Minister of Women and Early Childhood um, in charge, Her Honorable Amina Prisa, was meant to be joining us, but she's not here right now, but she's with us in spirit and would like to um, celebrate her as um, the youngest um, cabinet member in, the, in, in, in charge. It is very encouraging to see that our leaders do see the value of young people serving and, and co-leading with them. And, and last but not least, of course, how can I forget, I'd like to recognize um, the A Youth Envoy, Ms. Aya Chebi, who is, of course, um, the pioneer and exceptional leader for, for, for all of us. Um, please kindly note that um, this event has both English and French interpretation. There is also a poll that will ask all the participants to answer as we go along. Um, as the Saudi, um, the Saudi contributors will share their stories and that panel will be moderated by uh, Ms. Pamela Akplogen. Um, she's a member of the AU Youth Advisory Council. And I'd like to inform you that there's also a landing page for the Saudi um, blog. If you are interested in it, please do check it out as we go along the event. It's at www.saudilunch.com. And, um, and please send us your questions as we go along. Please send us your comments so that we can keep the conversations going and we keep this um, engaging as possible. And uh, without taking any further delays, I'd like to invite Ms. Aya Chebi to please give us her welcome notes. And um, if I may, following the envoy, if uh, Ms. Victoria Maloka, the acting director of um, AU Women, um, gender development, gender development can right away follow on to give us the opening remarks um, so that we can uh, move quickly. And uh, Miss Victoria, you have about two minutes, please. Aya, I'll give it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, your excellencies and everyone watching us live. I want to uh, first acknowledge the first lady of the Republic of Botswana. Thank you for honoring our invitation to celebrate Saudi and young women. Um, commissioners, Mama Sarah, Mama Amira, and Special Envoy, Mama Binta Diop, thank you uh, for always showing up when your daughter calls. Uh, your support means a lot. 
Uh, Dr. Ngingason, I know your schedule is busy, but sparing time to be here shows your commitment to the youth agenda as always, and we will continue to support uh, Africa CDC through the African Youth Front on coronavirus and mobilizing youth in this fight against the pandemic. Uh, my remarks will be brief and a vote of thanks to everyone who has supported this project. I want to thank uh, Gender Directorate. Uh, I'm grateful for the support of FAO uh, uh, for immediately providing resources to mobilize this idea because ideas remain ideas if they don't get the resources uh, needed. I want to also thank uh, Sif, uh, particularly uh, Linda, for supporting women with remuneration because we awarded each contributor. Uh, and we want to promote a culture where young people are valued and rewarded for their talent. So you made that possible. Um, I want to also acknowledge uh, support from DIC, uh, the review committee for uh, providing time to select 25 out of about 500 submissions. Uh, and also want to thank my office team and SALTI team, uh, Ruth, Reem, Neil, Nathan, Rahda, Rotimi, and many others. And it's important to highlight this project is youth-led and Africa-led. All members of the team are talented and dedicated young Africans. And of course, thanks to all the young women from all over the continent and the diaspora who responded to the call and shared their inspiring stories. And I look forward to hearing from the panel later uh, today uh, by Pamela, moderated by Pamela, member of the of this project. I'm really excited for the launch today. Uh, my vision for Saudi was to provide space and a platform that carries the feminist values of the African Union and changes the narrative about young women, because I do believe African Union is feminist. Uh, having parity in the commission is feminist. Our AU gender strategy is feminist. And now the AU has its first ever blog, Saudi, dedicated to young women. So that is also feminist. Um, uh, so for me, it is important that we put up uh, the African Union forward uh, in these spaces and bring more young people and bridge uh, the gap. The SOTI blog is now up on the AU website and we envision to run this uh, uh, every year in month of July. But this first edition uh, of the 25 stories is commemorating the 25th anniversary of Beijing Declaration because we thought 2020 would be the year of transformation in gender equality, but we were all hit by COVID-19 pandemic, which exposed further gender inequalities, erasing stories and faces and voices of young women. Uh, but when you read SOTI, you will know that our generation will continue to be on the front line of the, this pandemic fight and other crises. And as young African women, we will leave our mark for the next 25 years. So today is really uh, to elevate and celebrate the resilience, the innovation, the impact, and the agency of these 25 bold young feminist sisters whose work shall not go unrecognized and whose experiences shall not go unnoticed. And we will continue to use SOTI to further advocate for the issues they care about. So thank you all for being part of this celebration and for amplifying this platform. Thank you very much, um, Aya, for the, those kind words and congratulations on, uh, as always, pioneering and, and leading the launch of um, the blog. I see uh, Ms. Victoria is ready. Good afternoon to you. And I would like to invite you to take the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cindy. Good morning to you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Aya Chebi, our youth envoy, um, we celebrate you. Good afternoon to you. Let me also recognize all my principals, Commissioner Sarah Abo, Commissioner El Fadil, Madam Diop, Dr. John. It is all good to it is good to see all of you well and healthy. Thank you so much. Mem Martha Mohezi. Thank you so much for always being there and for your support. I would also like to give a special recognition to uh, Honorable Amina Longo in, in absentia. She's a young uh, Minister of Women and Early Childhood Protection of the Republic of Chad, newly appointed um, a minister holding a very, very important portfolio. We congratulate her and, and we celebrate her. Thank you so much. Uh, also to our keynote speaker, Me Neomasis, we welcome you, Wamukhezu Me. Uh, that is it's wonderful, your welcome, um, uh, Madam. All young African citizens, good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever you are in the globe, we, we really welcome you to this beautiful launch of, of the Saudi blog. And let me congratulate Aya for, for her visionary leadership and her team really for, for leading 
on on the development of of this blog this this is a great contribution to to what we see as changing the narrative about gender equality and women's empowerment and especially um, uh, the the narrative about about young young people and and in, and in particular young women in in the continent the fact that young women themselves you know are documenting their own experiences of how they are experiencing COVID-19 and making proposals on how the continent could best respond to the, to the pandemic is really, really important. Um, this is indeed young women claiming their rightful place in the, in the history of Africa and telling their own stories. You know how we often say that uh, if her story is not told, she will be taken out of history. So thank you really a uh, young African women um, uh, leaders um, for leading on telling her story so that you can concretize her space in history in, in, in Africa. We, we also have a saying in, 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 in my language, and uh, um, I know Memesis is going to understand this, but I'll also translate it in, into, into English. We say, which means um, uh, loosely translated, the wisdom of mother dear comes from baby dear. Um, in, in the continent, we, 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 we often say that it is important to take the voices of young people into consideration. It is important to hear the, the, you know, the wisdom of, of young people. And really, the Saudi bloc, for me, it is a demonstration of that particular value where we say young women cannot be left out of the narrative, out of the discussions of how the development of the continent should, should, be, should, should, should be led. Um, young men um, of the continent working side by side with, with young women, you know, should be the ones leading on how the 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 future pandemics if ever they will they are going to come will be dealt with so that we don't have to have another you know covid 19 the young scientists in the continent the young activists in the continent the lawyers the medical practitioners everyone should have a voice and saudi is giving us that platform where each and every one of these young people are writing their own experiences and saying this is how best we can deal with any other pandemic in the future and really for the gender directorate we are very excited to partner with the office of the of the youth envoy and with all the young people in the continent to make sure that um, your voices are amplified, that your voices are heard, that your stories are told. And we are also looking forward to, to collaborating beyond uh, dealing with the pandemic to also making sure that all the other areas of, of, of work that concerns young people are really um, out there and they're prioritized in the work of the, of the, of the commission. And so really in, in brief, let me welcome everybody and thank you really everybody for, for making time to come to the launch and also to congratulate all the authors and, and to thank all those who have supported us and, and Memo Huezi and, and everybody, and Madam Diop, our commissioners, Mema Sisi, we really thank all of you for your support and we look forward to continuing to work with you to make sure that the young women of today who are soon going to be the older women of tomorrow really take that place today that we don't wait for tomorrow and um, but we take and we give the space today and for young people this is really your time and thank you very much for really claiming the space and not waiting to be given the space that you are claiming the space and the Saudi block is your space to to really um, 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 uh, say what you need to say, claim what you need to say, define the agenda of young people in the continent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Victoria, for, for giving us those remarks and thank you very much for for also um, embracing the, the, the role of young people, uh, not just within the pandemic, but the role of young people in general within the continent of Africa. And uh, without taking any further time, I'd like to invite Dr. John Gessasong from um, the Africa CDC. He is the director, sorry, at the Africa CDC to take stage. Um, sir, you have two minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the um, opportunity to participate at this very important uh, conversation. 
Thank you, Mrs. Aya Chebi and the AU Office of the Youth Envoy for the invitation to celebrate with you all the wonderful occasion of the SOTI publication launch. As we all know, the global fight against the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic is far from over and really it is just beginning in Africa. And just to throw out some numbers there as we speak today, as a continent, we have recorded about 870,000 cases of COVID-19 uh, with about uh, uh, 520,000 uh, uh, recoveries. Uh, unfortunately, 18,000 of Africans have died. Um, as a, uh, since the early days of the global pandemic, we have seen hospitals, clinics, and social services diverting resources to focus on COVID-19 response. And as the number of uh, cases continue to rise, maintaining essential health and social services during a pandemic will continue to be a challenge, especially here on the continent where such systems remain fragile. Likewise, it is very much just as important that the continent not lose ground in its progress for gender equality and women's empowerment. Uh, if you look at uh, the impact already of what COVID is doing uh, in our healthcare facilities, most of those infected uh, healthcare workers are women. And I think we should always remember that and be very deliberate in developing programs that will target uh, women uh, and, and protect them. The same women who take care of us when we are sick at home most of the time. And again, uh, we can underscore the importance of that. The launch of SOTI is therefore a tremendous step in the right direction that amplifies the voices of young African women all around and at this particular point in time, ensuring the world hears how COVID-19 is affecting uh, their realities. I'm certain that SOTI will draw the attention of the global audience, highlighting the challenges, celebrating the achievements, and elevating the great advocacy work of the young African woman. On behalf of Africa CDC, congratulations uh, uh, to you all on this special occasion. I thank you for your kind attention and specifically for your invitation for Africa CDC to share this and celebrate this moment with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nkes um, Nkenga Song. And um, I'd like to now invite uh, Madam Martha Muhezi, the Executive Director at FAWE to give us her two minute um, goodwill message. Thank you. Um, you are muted. Sorry about that. And uh, once again, good afternoon to everybody. Good morning, wherever you are. I would like to say we are very pleased to be part of this uh, discussion where young people are, all of us are there, where women are, all of us are there. And it's a pleasure to join the, the discussion this afternoon. I joined with my, the previous speakers just to applaud all the uh, distinguished women out there, the distinguished panelists and all invited guests, all those that are listening to this uh, discussion this afternoon, I would like to observe all the protocol and in a special way, I also want to congratulate uh, Aya and your team, the young people that have been able to put heads together and put all this that we are all discussing this afternoon. I do congratulate you for all that you've been able to put together, particularly spearheading the young people and putting the young people agenda at the forefront of the African Union agenda. We congratulate you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Forum for African Women Education that I represent here today, and on behalf of the FAWE Africa Board, I would like to, to thank again the young people for launching the Saudi African Women Feminist Blog publication. We love the African Youth Envoy and the AUWDD for establishing the Saudi blog, the Saudi blog platform as one that captures the three voices of the young people of Africa. It's always a good opportunity to see that the young people have space and that the young people don't only have space, but they are taking making the best use of the space that is available to them. 
I would just want to say that FAO is a Pan-African government organization founded in 1992 by five women distinguished ministers of education with the sole purpose of promoting girls and women's education in Sub-Saharan Africa in line with education for all. Our mission is to work together with our partners to create positive societal attitudes, policies and practices that promote equity for girls in terms of access, retention, performance, education quality, and this is by influencing the transformation of the education system in Africa. We are present in 33 countries across the continent. And given that we promote uh, the young people, so when efforts come up such as the Saudi blog, FAWE is very glad and privileged to partner with all the, the uh, other organizations, other goodwill ambassadors to promote the voices of the young people. I also take this opportunity in a special way to congratulate the 25 young African women who were shortlisted to share the, their thematic stories on youth silencing the gun, ending violence against women, employment and education, uh, education match and youth health and well-being. I would also like to commend all the 460 applicants and especially those who did not make it to the top 25 your effort and dedication cannot be cannot go without recognition. We appreciate you and we take this opportunity to thank you all for all the effort. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're experiencing, experiencing unprecedented times as the world battles the pandemic that is claiming many lives across nations and the, distorting the global trade. It distorts travel and also- uh, My apologies, uh, Memuez, if we can uh, wrap up, I apologize for Cutting you short, we are running out of time. Uh, we would like to move on uh, to Commissioner Amira because she has another appointment coming up. Thank you. If you can just give us your closing um, remarks, that will be great. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. And yes, I was I was just saying we we are first to, we are into very difficult times, and we do appreciate all the efforts that come on board to try and provide solutions in ending the pandemic. Despite the shortcomings, and on behalf of Hapfawe, I'm happy to support the young women and youth who have been on the front line on offering support in terms of service and incentives to communities affected by the pandemics, some of which have been captured in the South Block publication. As I conclude, I would like to recognize the partners and the team that have worked tirelessly to make this a reality. It's our hope that the finalists will continue to vigorously use their voices for the good of the African women and girls. FAWE salutes these young women and pledges continuous support in linking them up with, the pla with other platforms and opportunities for growth and leadership. I thank you all for your attention. I know time is not uh, on our side, but I do appreciate all that are present. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Madam Muwezi, for the words, and thank you to FAWE for um, being uh, one of the partners in, uh, with, within the Saudi launch. Um, I'd like to also just let our participants know and apologize that we're having a bit of a, an issue with the interpretation, so please do bear with us on that. And um, at this time, I'd like to um, welcome Her Excellency um, Amira Fadil, our Commissioner of Social Affairs at the AU. Commissioner, you have two minutes to give us your goodwill message. Thank you. Two minutes is not enough, but I will I try. <laughs> <laughs> then I will uh, I start by uh, uh, greeting His Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana, uh, Madame uh, Masisi, and uh, I will say all protocol observed, so to save time. And uh, sorry for joining late. I was uh, in the fund uh, meeting. I just, I just finished. Uh, excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, congratulations first to all uh, the finalists. From what I have learned, you have edged a large number of applicants to lead in championing critical voices, representing young girls and women, and issues from across the continent through SOTI, uh, my voice, Africa Young Feminist Blog. I commend uh, Mrs. Aya Shabi, uh, the AU Chairperson's Envoy on Youth, and, your, and her office uh, for an excellent and much needed initiative. Uh, thank you, Aya, uh, for also inviting me to be part of this launching. Uh, for me, you are all uh, an inspiration. Uh, as young girls and leaders driving this initiative, you must go further and take your futures in your hand, uh, in your own hands to determine your destiny and unlock your potentials. The Africa we want 
needs you. And if we can achieve at least three outcomes, we will be charting a just path, a just path for this continent future. The three outcomes are quickly equality, but in some of our member states, we have to say equity, not only equality, and inclusiveness and transformation. Africa's potential lies in our human capital, particularly our young people. We must expand investments now to ensure the future we are shaping today fosters your growth and innovation. Even more critical is making sure we address the gaps, gender disparities, and inequality that particularly strives Gail's leadership and participation. Ensuring inclusiveness is also key. We know where vulnerabilities in our society today lie. Some of these include our children, girls, and women living in poverty, lacking education, living with disabilities, and in toxic environments and relationships. We need to champion these voices, their well being, and the space in policy structures to ascertain their aspirations and needs, shape responses on the ground. And for this to happen, we must transform society for the better. With what are accepted standards or norms in society that continue to diminish young girls' possession and opportunities. And also the negative practices, including gender-based violence and harmful practices must be transformed. Leadership must be also transformed. In the equality, inclusiveness and transformation, I can say that the African Union Commission and indeed the Department of Social Affairs that I lead plays critical importance in moving this holistic agenda forward alongside our dear colleagues in the Gender Directorate with Madame Victoria and has, her team. We work tirelessly to promote the rights and welfare of the child to address health burden on the continent. And now we are having this launching amid uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And also I would like to salute the role of uh, our envoy, Aya, and all the young Africans uh, in combating COVID-19 in Africa. They created their own front and they are really supporting the work of Africa uh, CDC. We work tirelessly to promote the rights and welfare of the child to address health burden on the continent, which has largely uh, affected the children and it has a child and a feminine face. And to eliminate the gender-based violence, human rights violations and harmful practices, young girls and women continue to face in Africa, including early pregnancies, child marriages and female genital mutilation, among other important programs. This highlights how much we share in your aspiration and conviction. And as part of the AU Commission, be assured that uh, you have an ally in us, in the Social Affairs Department, and we will uh, continue to be working together. In conclusion, your voices are essential. Take every opportunity to ensure you are heard. And what we must do at the Commission and in our con countries is to ensure you are visible and you are heard as young population. I thank you once more for the opportunity to share in your efforts and to convey what is driving our work at the AU Commission towards girls and women's empowerment. Shukran jazilan, thank you, and merci, abogado, and ahsan tehsana. These are our five official languages. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Amira, for the kind words and thank you for joining us. We know that your schedule is quite packed. We do appreciate I'm, I'm, that you I'm running able. from one meeting to the other. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We do appreciate um, uh, that. Before I ask um, Her Excellency Professor Sarah to, to take the stage, I would like to remind everyone that um, you, can def you can visit the website um, Saudi Launch dot com so that you can see some of the amazing stories that are already uploaded on there and don't forget that we have polls that are running as we go through the program so please do uh, make time as we go along to visit the website to look at what is happening over there um, professor sarah i'd like to give this time to you um, ma'am and respectively you have two minutes to give us your goodwill message thank you very much Commissioner Sarah.
Um, I think the commissioner is having some technical issues. Um, and so I guess we'll move on uh, in the essence of trying to keep up with our time. And then once she's able to join us, she can, um, she can uh, take the floor. And I guess at this time, I'd like to welcome our keynote address from Her Excellency, Mrs. Nio Masisi, the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana. Very warm welcome to you, ma'am. The floor is yours for the keynote address. Respectfully, I would ask that you take seven to eight minutes for it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. I'll do my best. <laughs> but as they say from where I come from, if you want to really praise your child, you could go on the whole day. But it's okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> May I share thee, the AU Special Envoys on Youth, Her Excellency Amira El Fadil, and other commissioners, Dr. Ngenya Song, Director for Africa CDC, Martha Muhwezi, esteemed contributors, and I'm proud to say I have one of the contributors here, Tlamelo Magadi, who's from Botswana. She's seated with me here. And esteemed panelists, I greet you all this afternoon, not forgetting our virtual guests out there. It is my profound pleasure to have been invited by the African Union Office of the Youth Envoy and the Women, Gender and Development Directorate to speak at this important webinar at the launch of the Saudi publication. I thank you very, very much, Ms. Aya Shebi, Shukran, for the invitation affording me the opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate Africa's young voices firsthand, our own children from this very beautiful continent. Let me also join the previous speakers in congratulating the AU Youth Envoy for the commendable initiative, which empowers the African adults and girls and young women by according them the space, not only their voice, to voice their concerns, but to contribute to shaping the future that they want. This is particularly important during these unprecedented times when the COVID-19 pandemic is dictating how we engage, how we interact and how we promote our causes. I also wish to express my deep appreciation to the other organizers, contributors, and supporters of the Saudi initiative, as it demonstrates the unrelenting commitment, dedication, and contribution to the continent's transformation and change towards realization of our Agenda 2063. The invitation to give a keynote address at this momentous occasion could not have come at a better time than now. When the world is grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, it is even more critical for us in Africa where resources are inadequate to address challenges posed by the pandemic. The fact that the pandemic has set us back several years in achieving Agenda 2030 SDGs makes it more urgent to accelerate efforts for the remaining part of the decade. The Saudi initiative offers an excellent time up platform for the expression of voices, talent and skills by our very own young girls and future women in a space that promotes interaction and affords participants a key role in influencing the attainment of a people-driven agenda 2063. It demonstrates and unleashes the potential of African girls, women and youth in general in defining and taking control of the future we want. I also wish to reiterate my support for the empowerment of adolescent girls and young women particularly those in rural areas and those with disabilities. This support is premised on the fact that empowering girls and young women is a profitable investment with absolute potential to raise every index of progress towards sustainable economic growth of any nation. A speaker before me mentioned, let us not forget our boys. These are the young men who form part of the equation on the other side, and hence we cannot afford to leave them behind. The emergence and power of the Saudi initiative is a clear demonstration of the capability of our daughters and sisters in establishing their path. It is a celebration of the girl child and her, her unending ambition to equally display her abilities, skills and competencies. It is a deeper and clear indication of the ability and desire of young women to continually express themselves in ways that allow their peers friends, families, as well as their male counterparts to appreciate and recognize the impeccable role of the girl child in society. Even more important, Saudi demonstrates that ever 
the ever-present need to engage girls and young women in public spaces and especially in decision-making, where those decisions have a direct impact on their welfare and development, especially in the African setting. We know the challenges there, we know the dynamics there, we know the nuances there. Let us bear in mind that Agenda 2063 will be an unattainable, unattainable vision if this girl child and if this woman in general continues to suffer exclusion, marginalization and perpetual minority status. This initiative, Madam Moderator, and all you wonderful people out there, has therefore come at the most appropriate time when Africa is among others and most importantly, closing the women's decade, celebrating the progress made during the 25 years after Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, celebrating 20 years since adoption of the UN Resolution 1325 on women, peace and security, as well as taking stock of the five-year milestones towards Africa Agenda 2030. As the COVID-19 pandemic deepens economic and social stress, and again, the restrictive movement and social isolation measures taken, the impacts of COVID-19 are exacerbated for women and girls, simply because of the virtue of the gender. Let me just highlight very quickly some of these negative impacts of the COVID-19 on young women and uh, that they are. There's reduced employment, therefore reduced economic empowerment for women during lockdowns. We have seen our women, both young and old, who depend solely on subsistence farming, losing their harvests and therefore their livelihoods. We have seen lost business opportunities for the women in the informal sector. This is the lady who does the hair, who sells credit for mobile phones. They depend on daily earnings and yet have to feed children and extended family. There has been ex increased exposure to contracting the virus as most roles on the front line of the response are manned by women, those nurses, the heightened risk of job and income losses leads to decreased socioeconomic status, resulting in increased poverty. This we know will lead to an increase in HIV incidence and other diseases, as these women tend to transactional sex and intergenerational relationships. We have seen an increased risk of GBV and sexual abuse, as these young women are literally locked down with their perpetrators, where Conflicts are heightened due to financial and social stresses. There has been a surge also in mental health problems due to the isolation brought about by lockdowns because people are unable to interact and socialize. Overall, there's anxiety because again, people cannot bury their loved ones and more especially this unpredictable future. The majority as we know, the population in Africa is made up of young people, more than 60%, and the majority is women. This compels us as a continent to engage in discussions and strategies where youth are counted as a key stakeholder in the forefront so that there's progress on the continent as we progress the agenda. International Youth Day 2020 theme points at the fact that it's youth engagement for global action, highlighting the importance of engaging young people at all levels. First, enriching national and multilateral institutions and processes. If a society seeks to genuinely renew itself, to genuinely review itself, genuinely reinvigorate itself, and hopes to prosper and stay relevant, it has to sharpen the system by which the older generation are able to groom for the future, groom those young ones who are coming up as future leaders. And how can this be achieved? As my contribution using my advocacy voice and, and platform, this leads me to a call on leaders for intergenerational co-leadership. And how can it be done? It's really through commitment to the development of the whole ecosystem by providing the infrastructure, both physical and virtual, the political space, the leadership, the education, the necessary reforms, to enable the young generation to thrive. 
As much as the emphasis has been around gender mainstreaming, it's time that our national development agendas build in youth mainstreaming in those plans. And all the time making sure that they're aligned to the UN Agenda 2030 and the AU Agenda 2063. Youth should be viewed as an investment for future gains rather than a cost. They add to the critical pool of our human capital throughout the cycle. We should also as leaders literally provide seats for the youth at the decision-making table, highlighting the missing seat where it is apparent. If we have a group of decision makers there and we don't have youth in there, let us call out for that missing seat. These seats, are the, uh, these seats as the youth often caution, should not be created as a token, but must constitute substantial youth representation. We should also wear lenses that allow us to constantly address the question, are we harnessing the youth dividend to its fullest or are we leaving it to diminish? To diminish? Finally, I'd like to share some words of advice using my own personal experience. I will rush through this, but again, it will give me, it will give me an excuse or the youth envoy an excuse for inviting me again. So I'll rush through a couple of them. First of all, I'd like to say, be in tune with yourself. This is your body, your mind and spirit while remaining true to yourself and believe in yourself. Unless you believe in yourself, trust me, nobody will. Additionally, there's no substitute for consistent hard work. Sometimes what people hear is actually drawn not only from your audible voice, but where you are making noise by your loud actions. Be unconventional and challenge the norm. This one I'll go on and say, I got married at 30. Two years later, I was on a plane to New York in pursuit of my dream career with the United Nations, while my husband remained behind to pursue his political career. We all know what it means in our typical culture. The questions, the comments, the remarks from family and friends. Remember, they also say, if you do extraordinary things, you will achieve extraordinary results. You must stay focused on the goal and know what it, what it is. Review it periodically. Allow no distractions at all. You must also step out of your comfort zone and keep yearning for change. Do not allow fear to stop you from taking the leap, that leap of faith. You must take risks. I used to change jobs very often. And my principle was, I leave these jobs and roles because I feel too comfortable in them. Mentors, make sure that you have mentors throughout your life. These could be virtual mentors or mentors that you are, you are meeting physically. It's very important. Lifelong learning. Trust me, knowledge is power. Take on those courses, take on those extra degrees, and just keep reading. Be a leader with no title. This is one of my favorite ones. It's actually a book by Robin Sharma. Above all, it is the work and delivery that will speak for you. Don't let the title hinder you. And finally, pitch yourself to the highest. And never apologize for setting the platinum bar for any assignment or task, no matter how small it seems, always ask yourself, am I in platinum, platinum mode? Am I giving it my best energy? I'd like to close off by just saying, remember that as you give the Saudi this voice, it comes with a huge responsibility. There are a few things that you have to comply with because it's a partnership. On the other hand, you have a willing and able year. And on the other hand, it is your voice. Make sure that you allow this feedback system to work such that much as you are given the voice, allow yourself once in a while to also be the ear. It is through feedback that we can really add value to this mechanism. Also make sure that there's mutual respect and know that a voice comes with responsibility. You must know that what you say brings about accountability, tolerance, and maturity. They say once you say the words, the words have gone out there to stay. Let me conclude again by commending the AU for the Saudi Initiative and other efforts expended in prioritizing the youth agenda and to encourage them to work closely with the member states
Uh, apologies, um, everyone. I think uh, Her Excellency's video sh cut short or she's having uh, some internet issues from there. But um, wow, that was quite encouraging. I'm also reading some of the comments that are coming online. A lot of people are saying she's very encouraging. She's very energetic. Her Excellency, please invite her back. Her Excellency, Can I please shoot? don't stop speaking. Can I shoot? <laughs> May I shoot? <laughs> Let me conclude by again commending the African Union Commission for the South Initiative and other efforts expended in prioritizing the youth agenda and to encourage them to work closely with member states in ensuring the young women and girls in both rural and urban communities are involved in Africa's envisaged people-driven development. As First Lady of Botswana and UNAIDS Special Ambassador for the Empowerment and Engagement of Young People in Botswana, I assure you of my full commitment and that of my country in contributing to the realization of the objectives of this youth-led project and others. I wish you all fruitful deliberations in your endeavors to celebrate and elevate the young feminists. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Shukran. Asante sana. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you so very much. As I was saying when uh, your video was cut off, we are definitely going to invite you back. So <laughs> you accept our invitation because uh, as well, the participants online are already asking you to come back to many, many more of these uh, webinars. And thank you so much for again, reiterating the importance of intergenerational co-leadership and also just um, you know supporting the young people of the African continent and also sharing on how important it is that young people are included. In, uh, in the decision tables. We value your expertise, we value your presence, and we're very honored that you're able to join us um, here today. And of course, we look forward to hopefully hosting you again uh, And because the, the chats on the window are, are just blowing up because they want to keep hearing more from you. So I think the next time we have you back, we'll give you a full hour for, for you to share more with us. Without taking any further time, I'd like to invite um, uh, Pamela, Miss Pamela Agupan, um, who's going to be the moderator for this upcoming session. And uh, Pamela, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to be really tight on you with, with regards to time as you talk to the ladies, um, you know, uh, with regards to their contributions. So please take the floor. You have 30 minutes to be in the section. Um, and please, everyone, don't forget to um, do visit the website, Saudi dot com to look to check out what uh, some of the stories we have on there and don't forget to participate in the poll that's still ongoing Pamela over to you thank you so very much thank you so much Cindy I hope you can all hear me and see me I'm very happy to join the launching of the search blog I'm Pamela Aklogon I'm from Benet and um, I'm a member of the AU Youth Advisory Council, and I'm very humble and happy and proud uh, to, mod to moderate the panel with uh, the six panelists, uh, willing contributor to the SOTI blog. Uh, as we all know, and we already said, uh, I'm greeting everyone, um, considering all the protocol, and especially my colleague and friend Ayashebi, uh, the youth convoy, for her leadership and uh, her vision on bringing the youth voice and the girls voice and the young men voice at the forefront of African Union uh, agenda. So before we, we start, I would like to say that as African, we don't define ourselves uh, through our challenges, but by the way we fight them with resilience and come up with solution and creativity. And I actually be and the six new women that will be part of this panel are uh, embody what I'm saying. And I would like to add that uh, in Africa, a proverb say that, no matter how long uh, is the night, the sun will, will rise. And I believe that Sodi blog is part of the rising sun that we need in Africa to change the narrative um, and to make sure that we are seen. And I work for an organization, Planet International, where we say girls must get equal. They have to be seen, they have to be heard, and they have to own their power. And as long as, long as we are conscious of our power and privilege, and we have platform like this, virtual or presence in present, uh, to share our power and privilege that we are giving the voice to young people. And when we talk about co-leadership, because it's not no longer about leadership, and also when we talk about empowerment, we are talking about the capacity and agency to create wealth, to lead, and also to change the narrative and tell their story. So um, 
to start with the panel, uh, I would like to invite Sarah Ali from Egypt to join me, Manuela Kati from Kone, uh, Adjambo Grace Orao from Kenya, Ruvimbo Musiyarira from Zimbabwe, I hope I say it well, and um, Shana Marie Andrews from Diaspora. Um, with each of them, we have 30 minutes and we will be discussing um, their contribution to the sorted lot. Um, I would like to say that Sarah Ali Yusuf from Egypt um, contributed with the visual on silencing uh, gender-based violence. And Sarah, as you are my first panelist, I would like you to take the floor to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your contribution, the visual that you contribute. And I have a good question for you to start uh, the discussion. So welcome, Sarah. Uh, hello, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Sarah from Egypt. Uh, at the beginning, um, I hope that you and all your uh, loves will be safe uh, in the light of the global pandemic. Uh, today, I'm here to share my experience and my feminist experience with uh, COVID-19. Um, my feminist experience was quietly challenging um, as um, I am working in the healthcare uh, in uh, the Ministry of the Egyptian Health. And healthcare workers are, um, are battling, are on, in, on the front lines, uh, battling uh, the pandemic daily. Uh, every day I return to home uh, after work, uh, I'm in a tense of fear of uh, transferring the infection to one of my family. Uh, on the other hand, I am a mother of two kids uh, and the closing schools had put more uh, pressure on me uh, and made the situation more complicated. Um, my experience with uh, Soti blog uh, was exceptional as uh, it was my first time for me to contribute in media uh, by a digital artwork that describes a cause. Uh, I do believe that using artwork uh, has a great power on conveying uh, messages. Uh, the motivation behind my uh, participation uh, in the uh, Saudi blog was my desire to share my voice uh, as a young woman, as a young African woman who rejects uh, violence and discrimination against women. Uh, my artwork contribution uh, was about a photography uh, that shows an Egyptian young woman uh, standing behind the fences of, uh, 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 of the lockdown. Um, and due to the lockdown um, and um, impact on the uh, economic crisis uh, that affected, uh, that negatively affected the family entity, uh, and the phenomena of the domestic violence has uh, increased and raised. Uh, and as a result, uh, in some families, uh, the risk of uh, gender-based violence has increased, uh, which is no, in my opinion, is not uh, no less than uh, lethal uh, on, on the girls than the pandemic. Um, finally, I would like to express my happiness for taking part in such uh, initiative uh, and with other talented young women uh, across Africa. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Uh, you contribute with the visual where you are sharing the impact of gender-based violence and how it can exacerbate the effect, the effect of COVID-19 on girls. And my question for you is, can you share with us a bit about the artistic process behind your visual? Uh, well, um, I was uh, thinking about uh, showing how uh, women uh, are affected uh, due to the lockdown, uh, especially that uh, women had uh, working women uh, faced a lot of pressure uh, due to uh, the school's lockdown, due to more uh, uh, w uh, homework that uh, they are teachers, they, are, they have to, to, to work also, they have to raise the children, and they have a lot of burdens uh, on them. Uh, so uh, uh, I thought about that, it, that women are like, they are um, on, on a cage or, of the lockdown, uh, suffering uh, a lot uh, during uh, this global pandemic. 
uh, and this is um, this was the idea of uh, my visual work uh, is to express how women were uh, are captured or uh, uh, under the defenses of the lockdown. Thank you very much, Sarah, for for your answer. And I know that by now, uh, everyone in the panel, everyone listening to this, can know that visual can help us uh, fight about gender-based violence, especially in crises like this. And as it's something that we can all see, then the, the message is even uh, more vibrant. Uh, so I want to say that you are not the only one who work on gender-based violence uh, uh, for the SOTI blog. Uh, je voudrais inviter Manuela Cathy Coney, qui est uh, ivoirienne, uh, qui a présenté aussi un écrit sur les violences basées sur le genre, surtout sur les questions uh, uh, d'emploi, donc des défis d'emploi des jeunes en Afrique. Okay. Manuela a insisté particulièrement sur l'autonomisation des femmes, sur les questions d'égalité de genre et de violence basées euh, sur le genre, spécialement pendant la crise du Covid-19. Euh, Manuela, je voudrais t'inviter à, à oui. prendre la parole pour nous en parler et aussi à reconnaître et à te féliciter pour ta participation à, à ce type uh, Just to brief or uh, just to provide a summary, Manuela is from uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Um, and she contributed to the SOTI blog on the gender-based violence, to silence the gun and youth unemployment in Africa. And she stressed on the uh, women empowerment in Africa and how it can play, play a critical role for gender equality during COVID-19. Uh, Manuela, tu, tu as la parole. Déjà, c'est un immense honneur pour moi d'être euh, choisi parmi tous ces panélistes. Et euh, il faut dire que la condition de la femme en Afrique, surtout en Afrique de l'Ouest, est très difficile. On va dire que la femme est incontournable et euh, cette crise du COVID-19 nous a montré encore une fois, malgré toutes les, les prospectives faites, que cette condition tend à devenir encore plus difficile lorsqu'il s'agit d'une crise, quelle que soit la nature de cette crise, que ce soit une crise sanitaire, une crise euh, politique, la, la femme ou les enfants sont toujours les plus touchés. Et euh, en ce qui concerne cette condition, elle est déjà touchée socialement avec les violences physiques, les violences euh, psychologiques. Et ensuite, elle est touchée économiquement. Économiquement, dans la mesure où la femme est détentrice même de ce côté informel, du secteur informel. Il y a beaucoup de pauvreté au niveau rural. Les femmes rurales, elles ne connaissent que la pauvreté. Et elles n'ont pas euh, le même standing. Elles ne sont pas... Euh, euh, elles ne sont pas, comment, comment puis-je m'exprimer, elles ne sont pas prises au sérieux, si on peut s'exprimer ainsi. Et cette plateforme nous permet ici de décrier ce fait-là. SOTI, pour moi, c'est la voix de, de ces femmes-là, de ces activistes qui veulent que, pour une fois, euh, comment dirais-je, pour une fois, les, la voix des femmes soit entendue sur certains domaines, du domaine de leurs droits. J'ai intitulé mon mon article « Droit de la femme vs Covid », c'est pour dire que, quelle que soit la nature d'une crise, la femme sera toujours la plus touchée. C'est pour cela que mon travail avec euh, SOTI est très important et il nous permet aussi de montrer euh, le travail de ces jeunes activistes-là. Uh, merci beaucoup, Manuela. Uh, just to summarize what Manuela just said, uh, which is very inspiring um, and, and very strong statement. Manuela was saying that girls and women and youth are the silent uh, victim of crises such as COVID-19. Uh, they are affected socially and economically. And SOTI is a platform for them as activists and influencers to voice and to amplify for once uh, the voices and the changes that women and new women are facing in Africa. And she ends by saying that no matter what we'll be doing and saying when there's a crisis like that, new women and women are mostly, uh, are always the most affected. Uh, je voudrais te remercier, Manuela, pour le message puissant que tu, que tu as partagé et surtout pour ta contribution à ce petit blog. Alors, j'ai une question pour toi aussi, comme c'était le cas de Sarah. Je voudrais savoir comment est-ce que tu perçois les réalités uh, uh, féministes en Afrique pendant euh, cette crise du COVID-19. Parce que tu as contribué avec un écrit, tu as parlé de l'autonomisation de la femme qui va au-delà de pouvoir euh, 
lui attribuer un certain rôle ou qu'elle prenne certaines positions, mais aussi de sa capacité à créer de la richesse, à, à oui. pouvoir contribuer économiquement. Alors, je voudrais savoir comment, comment est-ce que tu perçois euh, euh, l'impact ou euh, l'intérêt du féminisme et des réalités aujourd'hui euh, en Afrique pendant le Covid-19? Déjà, déjà, dans mon pays, en Côte d'Ivoire, on voit que les voix des femmes s'élèvent. Le, les mouvements activistes féministes sont, sont fuyants. Et euh, je voudrais parler d'une euh, activité, euh, d'une association qui est la Ligue ivoirienne. Cette euh, association a porté la voie de sensibilisation dans les, dans, dans les villages, dans les communautés rurales. Et euh, cette association a démontré ainsi que quand il y a des soucis, la femme est tout de suite euh, enlevée hors de l'école. Et par l'éducation de la femme, cette éducation de, cette, de la femme peut tout de suite porter atteinte à l'économie. Étant donné qu'une femme qui n'est pas instruite, ou même un enfant qui n'est pas instruit, cela euh, joue sur l'économie du pays. C'est en cela même que j'ai mis cet accent sur l'autonomisation qui part par l'éducation aussi. Et aussi par les financements des différentes activités de ces femmes, parce qu'elles travaillent beaucoup dans l'informel. Et ce, le secteur informel est le premier touché durant cette crise. Avec le confinement, il y a beaucoup de femmes qui n'ont pas pu sortir pour aller vendre leurs produits vivriers ou qu'importe le produit. Mais ce, ce, ce fait, le fait est là. Il faut soutenir les activités des femmes. C'est cela que je veux venir. Merci beaucoup, Manuela. Uh, I was, the question that I asked Manuela was about the feminist realities in Africa during COVID-19, and she has provided a very comprehensive answer. Um, given the case of Côte d'Ivoire, her home country, where there is a rising feminist movement, uh, changing paradigm from uh, the lowest level, from their communities, and how this is also stressing on education, funding, and also considering the impact of the informal sector on our economy and knowing that in the informal sector, this is where we find more of our girls and our young men, our new women and women in, in Africa. Uh, today, they can't even go out to sell uh, the fish that they can sell. And this is um, the, 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 the money on which they live every day. They live, they live on daily basis on, on the money that they get from selling fishes and you know all the products that, that they, can, they, they can use. So I really want to thank you, Manuela, for, for your contribution. Je voudrais te dire merci et de savoir en fait que ta contribution contribue également à changer les paradigmes, à, à changer la manière de percevoir, à changer aussi l'histoire de l'Afrique. Et c'est pour ça que je dis que les contributrices à SotiBlock sont vraiment des pionnières pour le changement que nous voulons voir en Afrique. Donc euh, félicitations à toi, surtout que tu es de la Côte d'Ivoire, donc que tu es un éléphant. Je, je suppose que Uh, l'impact sera plus grandissant. Merci. Following Ma Manuela, because we are rushing in time, uh, I would like to invite Grace Orao Ora from Kenya. Uh, Grace has been contributing with the video on uh, youth health, health and well-being, which is also a very important aspect during this crisis, as we know that well-being, wellness, and the, and the health Uh, and COVID-19 is actually even a, a health crisis before we can talk about how it's impacting our social and economic welfare. So Grace, welcome. Um, Grace presents the Women Volunteer of Peace Organization that launched an initiative to make uh, face masks uh, more available and accessible in local communities uh, for more disadvantaged and, and vulnerable family. And this is what we are talking about. When we come to COVID-19, we are talking about solidarity. So Grace, please um, welcome, introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about your contribution. And now I will have a question for you as well. Hello. Grace, I can see you, I can hear you and I can see you smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Adiambo Grace from Kenya. Uh, Kisumu County to be specific, um, a student at the University of Nairobi, a fourth year student, um, also running an organization called Women Volunteers for Peace, which works with the girls and young women in promoting and supporting the role of young people, especially women, in peace building activities. 
that contribute to living in dignity and dialogue. And uh, I think I would want to take this opportunity once again to uh, appreciate uh, having submitted my, uh, my, my, my documentation, uh, the fact that uh, African Union through the Office of um, uh, Youth and Boy IHAB, uh, I think it is right about time that the young people took up the space. Yeah, so other than creating your own space, uh, other than being given a space, you will not always be given the space that we all need as youth. But then stepping up and creating your own space in order to you know, create change in the community. So this is why I came up with the, the, the project called Wear Mask, or Koa Maisha, meaning uh, wear a mask and save lives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And before I can go to your question, I just want to remind everyone uh, from Facebook, Twitter, uh, everywhere, even in this uh, Zoom call, that you can ask your question uh, in the chat box or you can send us through Facebook and Twitter. We'll be answering some of them. So congratulations again, Chris. Thank you for your contribution. We are talking about a crisis. We are talking about COVID-19. And it's, first of all, a health crisis. And you have been, um, you know, targeting health and well-being in your contribution. So I want to ask you this very, you know, specific question, which is close to my head. How important was it for you to share your story on Tulsi Blog? Um, thank you so much. I think many a times uh, the youth uh, are, have been shielded into this kind of opportunities, and they really get this kind of. So me, when I met this kind of advert calling for submission for young women feminists, I, I just took it up upon myself because part of the work that I've been doing is uh, conducting girl talks program, which enables the young women and girls to embrace, embrace the culture of sharing out their concerns, their issues for their mental well-being. So um, when I saw this, it really motivated me to also in, in amplifying my voice because other than the work that I'm doing for them, uh, there's also the need for, for young women and young people to be acknowledged into the work that they're doing. So I took it up with all my hands and I worked uh, through my video, uh, the Vamas of uh, Maisha video, just to show people that even if, even if we have COVID-19 pandemic with us, this doesn't stop us from making change in our community, from creating uh, impact in our community. And just like Ms. Uh, Neo said, I, I, I was very sure that I was giving the right energy by impacting, especially the most vulnerable in our community. Let's talk of the children, the people, people living with disability, the women in the market, young yeah? people living in slums and rural areas who in Kenya, uh, most of them live from hand to mouth. And given that there's the slow down of economic activities going on and the lockdowns and the curfews, so you find that um, people do not give priority to buying masks and food. So when I came up with this project, I knew I was creating an impact. I was giving back to the society by uh, making available an essential, uh, an essential uh, a product like masks to them just so that we can fight together COVID-19 ensure that we all are uh, safe. Thank you very much, Grace. You have said a lot of powerful things. You said that young people are shared and they will not always be given space. They have to take over, they have to take charge, and they have to show by example, by leading by example, and, and share the stories and, and share you know, what they are doing there and, and have the exposure that they need and they deserve. And I believe that this is the whole purpose behind, behind Soti Blog and you are uh, the embodiment of the exposure that young people can get. And thank you for being so inspirational. And there is, there is no way to make a greater connection between you and the next uh, panelist, Vimbo, who um, contributes with the writing on the sexual assault that she has been facing um, at the age uh, in her life between the age of five to 25, which is very touching. I can relate to that. And I would like to welcome you, uh, Rubimbo, and also uh, ask all your friends, panelists, to welcome you and, and to share with us your contribution to introduce yourself. As you are talking about gender-based violence, especially sexual assaults and harassment, uh, I have a question for you, Coach. 
I'm eager to hear from you. Welcome, Ruby Mook. Um, good afternoon. I'm trying to start my video, but it says that the host has stopped my video. Okay, Cindy, can you help us? We all want to see Ruby Mook. Okay, Great, we can see you. Welcome. I can see your smile as well. Thank you so much. And you did say my name properly, by the way. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, my contribution is actually in line with what um, Her Excellency, um, Mrs. Neo Masisi spoke about, or touched on rather. My contribution, as you mentioned, was about um, the effects of COVID concerning gender-based violence and um, femicide, particularly in the country I live in. I'm Zimbabwean, but I live in South Africa and femicide, the rate of femicide in South Africa is one of the highest in the world. And so that was something that was really on my heart just throughout this pandemic. I'm just hearing all the statistics of the number of women that are experiencing domestic violence. And so um, I remember the day that I wrote this piece, I happened to be on Twitter and people were just sharing the ages where they were um, sexually harassed or raped or experienced some sort of sexual violence. And it just made me realize that um, there are so many women that are stuck with their abusers physically. And to add to that number, there are a lot of women that are stuck with their abusers mentally and emotionally because they still have, we still have to um, continue to deal with the scars of things that were done by men to us without our permission and our dignities being stripped away from us by men. And um, my piece was really about just um, the impact of COVID-19 on, on dealing with those issues as an individual in your home when you don't really have other distractions and you sort of have to face the demons of all of those mental scars that you were left with um, by people that will probably never apologize to you, by people who have probably already forgotten that you exist and yet you are the one that still has to live on with that memory of something that was stripped away from you. So that's what my piece was about. Thank you very much, Rumbimbo, and this has been so very well said. Um, you know, when we talk about COVID-19 beyond the numbers, because we can reduce women and girls to numbers. They are individual, they are people, and we know that they are suffering. And we know, uh, to give a practical example, people, people are saying, and we, we know that today, because of school lockdown and closure, young, young girls are at home, and they are reduced to domestic work. And we, we know that this is also increasing the sexual harassment, you know, the violence, gender violence, and exacerbating the freedom as well. So I would like to thank you for your contribution, um, especially uh, tackling the issue around uh, sexual harassment and, and assault. And the question that I have for you uh, is that, you know, what is the importance, you know, what, what does it mean to, to tell stories during COVID-19? What do you think about the place of storytelling during COVID-19? I think storytelling is so, so important because um, again, as Her Excellency Ms. Neo Masisi touched on, um, women's stories are not told enough. Um, story, generally, African stories are not told enough, but women's stories are not known at all because um, we grow up being told that when we speak, we become undignified. So I think it's very important, particularly now during COVID. Yes, um, COVID has definitely affected the human race as a whole, but then for women on top of the financial constraints and the financial challenges that we are facing, on top of that, we also have the, um, the mental and the emotional stresses of dealing with things when you are in isolation. So I think it's very, very important for African stories to be told because our stories are not known enough. And I think it is very important, especially now with everything that's been going on um, during this pandemic with the femicide and trying to constantly explain to men about why women's lives matter the same way that we're constantly trying to explain why black lives matter. That's how it is because now we're constantly trying to trying to make men understand our experiences that, oh no, I'm not safe when I walk in the streets and this is why. And then later on you find out, oh, now you're also not safe at the beach. You're not safe in a public toilet. 
and then you find out you're not safe in a post office. And lately we've now been discovering that we're also not safe in our own homes. So I think it is important, particularly for the education of not just men, but there's some women as well that are not well knowledgeable in that area or that do not understand how um, extreme our unsafety is. So I think um, that is the importance because in 2020, we as women were still trying to take up space, spaces that um, rightfully belong to us. And in parliaments, we're still trying to fill legislatures and cabinets using quota systems to put women and, and youth like we are tokens, like Her Excellency also mentioned. So I think that is the importance of sharing our stories so that we continue to take up space until we reach that level of equality. and. Just also as an extra addition, I think a lot of people have a lot of um, misconception about feminism because growing up, I was led to believe that being a feminist means that you hate men, you want to kill men, and that you are angry. So I think it's important for people to um, be educated about um, what feminism really is and our experiences so that we don't have those misconceptions up until we reach a point where women are really equal to men. Thank um, you sorry to intervene, uh, Madam Moderator, we are running out of time. I, we're really enjoying the discussions happening, but if you could please um, try to wrap up. Ruvimbo, I don't need to intervene. Uh, so maybe, Pamela, if we can have the next two speakers and let's yeah. speak away for yeah. time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Cindy, and thank you so much, Ruvimbo. Uh, I'm, making so the much. Connection, I'm making the connection with the next panelists by saying that our stories are, are not known enough so whether you're a writer or not, you should share the story out there. Um, so I'm welcoming um, Shaina Marie Andrews from the diaspora who contribute with a video on how women are leading uh, the good. Uh, so Shaina, please join us, introduce yourself, tell us a bit about your work. And my question straight to the point will be, um, what does it mean to you to amplify the voice of new women in Africa and beyond. Shaina? Hi, everyone. Um, good morning from the United States. Good afternoon to all of you and the rest of the world. My name is Shaina M. Andrews, and I am from the United States, but I was grateful enough to spend time in Ghana, West Africa, studying abroad in 2018. Um, I also have ancestral roots, so my connection to the continent is very near and dear to my heart. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I was able to submit an audio file. So I um, essentially made a um, audio file of a piece that I wrote. And I really wanted to get across the point that women have never been in the back side, in the shadows, the front lines of stories of revolutions, everything that takes change. Women have just in ways been shushed, been silenced. And as a quote that, the late but great Malcolm X said, the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. And um, as a black woman in America, that is certainly true. There are so many um, feats that we have to, um, we have to overcome so many different barriers to be viewed even as half of a person. And I really wanted to show um, or tell with my piece that women have the power, we have the voices, we are the backbone of the world and to, when we have that space to speak, we are able to just conquer so much. And I just really wanted to um, highlight that with COVID-19 here in the United States specifically, black people, especially black women are dying at higher rate, being mistreated. And I wanted to highlight the fact that all of these injustices are um, detrimental to us. And to answer your question, as a Black woman in America, I believe that it is certainly my duty to amplify the voices of my sisters in Africa and throughout the rest of the, the, the diaspora by giving the space, giving the time to speak, listening to these stories, even though I am a Black woman and we are all um, related in the sense of where we come from, our stories are different. And for me to not think I know everything about someone, so giving that space to listen and giving that space to learn and to share our stories because none of our stories are unsung. They're simply unheard by most of the world. 
Thank you very much, Ayana. And I, I think if you hear it well in, in English, I'm going to say it in French. Uh, Ayana dit que c'est un devoir aujourd'hui de pouvoir parler, de pouvoir nous exprimer, de pouvoir partager nos histoires. Il ne s'agit pas du fait que nos histoires ne sont pas venues, mais c'est qu'elles ne sont pas entendues. Et c'est désormais un devoir pour tout le monde de pouvoir amplifier ces histoires en Afrique et au-delà au de l'Afrique. Et surtout de montrer le rôle important que la femme est en train de jouer. Et je pense qu'aujourd'hui, au-delà d'une crise, parce qu'on dit que chaque crise est une opportunité, au-delà de voir le COVID-19 comme une crise, c'est beaucoup d'espoir, c'est beaucoup d'énergie, c'est beaucoup de positivité pour la jeunesse. Et c'est aussi une plateforme, Sauti Blog, qui permet aux jeunes femmes de pouvoir s'exprimer, de partager leur histoire, leur vécu, leur contribution à, à la réponse au COVID-19. Et notre dernier paneliste, the last panelist for the, for the day is from Cameroon, uh, Rashida Tuwiba from Cameroon. She also submitted a writing and Rashida is talking about the severity of the effect of COVID-19. And I believe that there is no way we can think about COVID-19 as an opportunity if we are not conscious of the severity uh, of the effect of COVID-19 on our communities, on the girls and the young women. So I'm very happy to have my last panelist talking about that and bringing us from the severity of COVID-19 to positivity. Welcome, Rashida. Rashida, too? Rashida, too? Can you hear me? Rashida, too? Yes, can you hear me too? Yes, I can hear you now and I can see you as well. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Uh, I'm Biba Lenyo Rashidatu. We're all the way from Cameron. I want to first of all say I'm very grateful for this opportunity given to all the contributors of the platform, not excluding the ones who were selected. So my writing was on COVID, the infiltrating their minds on GBV. You know, GBV has always been in the existence, especially from my way back from the Anglophone crisis, where, where we come from, there have been some Anglophone crisis going on and everyone knows about it. So the pandemic uh, COVID-19 came in to increase again the GBV, which was a very, very alarming issue. So in as much as said, COVID-19 has to be coped on because statistically we've seen that uh, the issue of gender-based violence, sexual, physical violence, uh, physical assault and other stuff has increased. Definitely what I want to say is that realizing all this, we have to stand as one. Look at the sustainable development goals, parenting, multi-stakeholders where we have to come together for a greater, a greater presentation to in how to cope in this COVID-19. Sorry, this is my first time being in front of the panelists, but um, it will be okay. You so, did well, Rashida, too. You did well. <laughs> you did well. Uh, in, in as much as I won't have enough to say to you, but I actually, in the writing, there was actually the details which we're uh, going to the sorted block, uh, everyone is going to see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asida, too, for also reminding us that COVID-19 may be a crisis that we are facing in Africa. Maybe it will even be more exacerbated in the coming month. But we should, also, uh, we should not also think about it as an African crisis, but globally, and leverage on the levers that we already have, such as the Agenda 2030 and the Agenda 2063 of the African Union and see the solution and, and look at it with hope, positivity, politically, financially, psychologically, and socially, economically. As we again said, the solution is in the good, good, good governance and wealth creation and putting new, new women, young people and women at the forefront of the agenda of African Union. So Cindy, back to you. I know we have some questions, but I know you are back, so. <laughs> but I'm very excited, it has been a great panel. We can hear you, Cindy. Oh my know. gosh, sorry, I didn't notice that I muted. Thank you so much, Pamela. It's been an amazing panel and I do apologize that I had to 
um, cut you off there for the essence of time, um, because we do have a few people, including some of our commissioners that have to step off to go to other meetings. But thank you so much, ladies. It was very wonderful to hear of the wonderful, wonderful um, triumphant stories from each of you and for your contributions. Again, I'd like to remind everyone that they can um, read and listen to some of these stories at saudilaunch.com. And um, if you haven't taken part in our poll, please make sure that you do take part in our, in our, on our poll. And once again, thank you so, so very, very much. You've been all been very much enlightening. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask um, Her Excellency Professor Sarah, uh, the Commissioner of um, HRST at the AU to give us her goodwill message. She wasn't here before um, because of technical difficulties, but I believe she's here with us right now. So um, Professor Sarah, if you could respectfully please have uh, two minutes to share with us your goodwill message for the Saudi lunch. Thank you very much. I'm trying to put on the um, camera, Cindy. I, will I can see you, there you are. <laughs> I will respectfully use two minutes. <laughs> I want to congratulate every one of you that have listened to since I came on board. Your experiences are inspirational and they are actually what we find out there in the field. So first I will start with my goodwill message. It is with profound joy that I want to congratulate the AU Office of the Youth Envoy in collaboration with the Women, Gender and Development Directorate on the occasion of the launch of Saudi Africa Young, Young Feminist Blog, which is the first ever blog of the African Union. I understood that Saudi in Arabic means the voice. And it is very essential as we are hearing the various plethora of voices speaking about feminist concerns. It is very, very inspirational. And the aim of an annual edition with focus on gender and youth value, talking trending teams, particularly the AU team of the year and COVID-19 pandemic is encouraging and will create more awareness. The featuring of 25 outstanding young women celebrating Benjamin plus 25 is inspirational. As the name Sati in Arabic invokes voice, I pray that Sati will amplify young women and youth as inscribed in aspiration six of the agenda 2063, which calls for an Africa whose development is people driven, relying on the potential of African people, especially its women and youth. Youth and women by virtue of their vulnerability share common realities of marginalization. This platform will reveal the common challenges and achievements of young women and a critical insight with their struggles. I am confident that Saudi, the voice, will be a rewarding experience for all young people to expose their struggles, advocacy, and achievements in fighting the global pandemic, COVID-19. On my own behalf and on the behalf of the Department of Human Resources, Science and Technology, I wish you well in your endeavors, and I hope the maiden edition of Saudi Africa will grow and be sustained to represent the values of youth across the continent as it is intended. I convey my good wishes to all the contributors of the first edition. Thank you very much, Aya. Thank you very much, Cindy, for moderating. And long live the girls and women of Africa. Long live the youth of Africa. Long live Africa. May God bless you all. Now, Cindy, can you give me one minute, please? <laughs> you can go ahead, Commissioner. Just one more Thank minute. <laughs> one more minute, Cindy. And because I don't want to speak too much, so I just wrote something. Yes, we must change the paradigm and stereotypes given to being female. We can see from the various exchanges I have listened to how many of the young women battle in these unprecedented times, yet they have not given up. The prevalence of sexual assault and domestic violence and variant stifling methods are not enough to stifle us. There is what we call women power. And Her Excellency, Mrs. Neo Masisi, spoke on this women power and the vision of having self-dignity, self-value, and self-respect for your person. You are an individual, you have a right of your own, and you have a right to live. Don't let anybody minimize, marginalize, and make you their doormat. You are beyond that. You are created with flesh and blood, two eyes, two ears, one nose, one, just like any other person. So you have a right to live. So in that essence, I, I want to say that it is high time men and women 
who victimize girls and women are held accountable. Our culture is patriarchal, yes, but that culture does not say that women and girls must be held in contempt, but many have shrouded their victimization in misconstrued patriarchal practices. That is why we say in Africa, father is supreme, but mother is gold. So that means women have value. So conventional gender paradigms that disadvantage women must be stopped. And the idea that men are naturally aggressive while women are innately passive is wrong. Change our mentality, like Bob Marley say, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can change our life. So the, our life in our own hands and together we're going to move. I want to be one of the people that will be speaking in Sorti, even though I'm not young, but I'm young, by virtue of the fact that you, Cindy, and you, Aya, you will give me space. Thank you very much, and Aya, congratulations. As always, thank you, Professor Sarah. You always bring the fire to these webinars. We love having you. We love hosting you. Thank you so, so very much. I truly have to apologize. I know there are so many questions and so many people raising their hands online. They would like to ask the panelists questions. They would like to ask the commissioners some questions, but we'll take your questions and, and hopefully we'll be able to answer them through email or somehow in another way. Again, please do not forget to visit the website Saudi Launch. Dot com. And at this time, it is my humble honor to welcome, um, I call her my mama, uh, Madame Benita Diop. She's the special envoy on women, peace and security. She's going to give us her closing remarks. And I know she's going to be very much phenomenal because she is a pioneer in um, youth empowerment, uh, women leadership, and many, many other beautiful things. Madame Diop, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Cindy, Madam Moderator, excellent moderation. Um, let me first recognize the First Lady of Botswana, Mrs. Neo Masisi, for her inspiring remarks. I think that uh, she set the tone and I think you young women, you can co-lead already. You see that leadership and she, she's offering to be with you and to be with us in this journey. Uh, let me also recognize my sisters, <clears throat> Commissioner Al-Fadil, but also Sarah. And uh, uh, Sarah is the one always uh, having the youth agenda at the AU, but doing great work for all of us in the continent. So uh, um, I will stand on the existing protocol. Uh, but also want to congratulate my sister, my daughter, Aya. Aya Shebi, uh, really the AU Youth Envoy for this remarkable initiative of publishing 25 young African women's creative action. When I listen to them, I really see that they are engaged. They are not just sitting and watching, but they are taking the lead. So um, 25 of Beijing, 25 young women, excellent work, Aya and the WGDD. You might recall uh, that um, in February this year, we published 25, uh, it was AU and UN, and Aya, you were part of that publication of Young, the Youth, uh, the book that featured women and women's organization from across the continent uh, who work with community, uh, but also we were celebrating the 20 year anniversary of 1325. I'm very happy that to see that women are talking about women, peace and security and the youth are taking that agenda as a priority. And I will tell you why it's important in this agenda that we combat violence against women but also we make sure that women lead in uh, post-conflict, in conflict setting, but post-conflict setting. I think this initiative, when you are bringing the voices and the faces of the youth, um, you are, and the women, of course, it's a great contribution to um, the African women agenda that you uh, women are leading, but also the young people are leading, and not just women, but the voice, uh, of the young women have been heard um, with the senior um, in various agenda of the continent. 
You know, when you link it to the COVID pandemic, and I think many of you have spoken on how the women are battling against this enemy and being at the center of action, be either in the health, uh, the socioeconomic, uh, but also, as I mentioned, uh, the peace and security um, uh, areas. So across the continent, what I have seen, <clears throat> excuse me, is to look, um, each one of you have spoken, and I'm sure the 25, and the, the, the one that we have not seen, or the one who have not written, I'm glad that there were thousands of people who come at this uh, Saudi uh, blog. You know, you, they organized campaign. You know, they even went to the street to denounce violence against women and to call, and this is very important, to call for perpetrators to be brought to justice. So I think this is what we need to show. And this is what this Saudi block is showing to the world that African youth are resilient. You are characterized by your resilience and your solidarity. And we need to applaud that, this solidarity movement that you are, and you are at the heart of the decision uh, making. Nobody invited you, but you want it and you are taking uh, by demonstrating your capacity, demonstrating your know-how, and also making sure that your solution that you are bringing at front can be leapfrog because you have them, but we need to make sure that also we support you. We support you, we accompany you, but also the resources that are available in the continent, you have access to those resources. So for me, this publication, this block of Sa Saudi is another demonstration on how COVID has catapulted the digital space in the new normal and will continue to shape responses to societal challenges. So the young people are in the digital and you are leading because digital is important in this new normal. So uh, let me again say that we need to invest and direct um, our resources in the solution that you are showing today, but the others that are um, unseen in this continent. So I think this, uh, if we say that we need youth have capacity, we're not saying building capacity. What we need is to accelerate the co-leadership approach. Um, you know, make sure the young people have the better say and their impact, you are having impact, but we recognize the impact uh, that you are putting on the life now and the future, and in particular for the future. So there is a need for intergenerational dialogue. It was said by the first lady of Botswana and many of you, mutual strengthening. I always say, Aya, we need your wisdom as you need our wisdom. So let's work together. In the African Women Leaders Network, we organized last year, I think uh, Cindy and many of you were participating in Kenya. We, what we wanted to say that we would continue uh, to do that kind of mentorship. You mentor us and we mentor you to make sure that that co-leadership become a reality for Africa transformation. My office, the office of the special envoy will continue really to work with the Office of the Youth Envoy, IA, but also other network like the GMAC network, the Aulin Youth Caucus, all of you together to make sure that you take the lead, but you make sure also that you guide us on the implementation of Agenda 2063, uh, but also Agenda 2030. As I conclude, let me once again congratulate Aya for this great initiative and WGDD, uh, the team of Victoria, the team of Aya. Uh, let me also uh, thank the FAWE that I have seen, um, the Children Investment Fund Foundation, uh, but also Plan International 
and the other partners whom I may have not named here, but I know that many have contributed to this process and we want to thank them, to congratulate them um, for the, on behalf of the African Union. We are grateful for this partnership. So uh, let's continue um, young people, young women with the elders of this continent. Let's continue to work together for gender equality, women empowerment and the youth co-leadership. Uh, I'm sure that uh, as we always realize that these are indeed the true pillars for an inclusive and transformative, transformative Africa. I will visit all the time the block to continue to be inspired by what I have heard. And I invite all my sisters, the senior, to go and visit those stories because they are inspiring. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aya. Thank you, the team. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Mama Diop, for those words, as always. Um, we are very, very appreciative of your support. And as I mentioned before, you definitely pioneer in, in, um, in ensuring that there is intergenerational um, leadership and dialogues and youth empowerment. So we're very thankful uh, to you for giving us of your time today. And also just a, a wonderful thanks as well and appreciation to Her Excellency, the First Lady of Botswana, Mrs. Masisi. And we do hope she'll be able to join us for other upcoming um, webinars as well. And as always, um, the two, our two commissioners at the AU, Commissioner Amira and, Co and Commissioner Sarah, and to all our distinguished guests today, this has been a very enlightening, exciting um, um, experience for all of us sitting here, listening to all the stories, listening to all the, um, um, the, the, and reading all the questions that have been coming up online. It does show that young people are very much interested in, in co-leadership. Young people have stories to share, but they're also ready to lead. And I do hope that um, we, we do see a lot of uh, change coming through the launch of this blog. Again, you may visit the website at any time to read the stories that are uploaded at the moment. There'll be many, many other inspiring stories that are um, that will be loaded as time goes. And as we work, work together towards the realization of the Africa we want and the, Af and the Africa Agenda 2063. And as uh, Madame Benita Diop mentioned, and, and uh, I think Professor Sarah did mention as well, along with the First Lady, we are very, we, it, how exciting is it that, you know, we have the 25 contributions, um, linking them to Beijing 25 for this year. So this is very exciting. Congratulations to um, the Youth Envoy for leading on this and congratulations to the, um, the OIE for working hard to ensure that this comes to fruition. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, I would have loved for all of us to stay on this webinar today to continue sharing um, stories of triumph and um, sharing more on where do we go from here, but our time is up. And so I'd like to say our sincere thanks on behalf of the OIE. Um, thanks to all the teams that have been involved in putting this event together, the AU um, team, I'd like to thank the sponsors of the blog, Children's, in, uh, Children's Investment Fund Foundation, and to the partners of um, the event, Farway, Girls Advocacy Alliance, and above all, to all those that joined us today, and not forgetting uh, Plan International. Thank you um, to uh, the excellencies, our elders, and all of you young people that joined us. I hope you do you did get a chance to engage online and answer the polls. And again, please do not forget to visit the Saudi uh, website at uh, Saudi Launch. Dot com. And if you'd like to follow the um, what's happening here at the OIE, I would like to invite you to also check out our website. We're there on Twitter, we're there on Instagram, on Facebook. And you can, um, again, if you'd like to watch some of these webinars, you can find them on YouTube where they are uploaded. And um, the website for the Envoy's office is auyouthenvoy.org. And so you can email us there to share your thoughts, your comments, your requests, and your ideas. And by the way, we have an intergenerational dialogues platform that that is running, we'll be uploading more information on that. So we should continue these conversations. Would love to hear from you. And from my end to all of you, thank you so very much for being here today. Have a wonderful afternoon, have a wonderful morning to those of us that are in the diaspora and have a wonderful day and please stay safe. 
We hope to welcome you again to another exciting webinar in a few weeks. And by the way, International Youth Day is coming up on August 12th. So I do hope that many of you are planning to join the many, many amazing events that will be happening online. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Over to you, Neil. I do apologize. We seem to be having uh, some technical difficulties. I am not sure if you can hear me. I hope everybody can hear me. I was, can you hear me? Yeah, we heard you, Cindy, yeah. and we're closing now. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.